for a little laughter tonight? <laughs> oh, I'm telling you. I, ladies, are y'all happy? Are y'all happy? You know, if, late mamas, are you happy? See, if mamas ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Are y'all happy? You know, well, I didn't want to sit in the choir. I wanted to be out there, but they made me sit up here. I know how y'all are. We want mamas to be happy. Ladies, we love you. We appreciate you. We thank you for all that you do, and, and, and we want to make you happy. I try so hard to make you happy, and uh, I try to make my wife happy. And it's not easy to make them ha happy. But, you know, the old saying, if mama's not happy, ain't nobody happy. Uh, we men, we try to provide for you. You know what I mean? We want to please you. We, 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 we want to protect you. We want to provide you with possessions. <laughs> and we're worn plumb out. Uh, we're pooped. I don't know how to say this, but y'all are getting on our nerves. Do you know that? Y'all are on our nerves. Y'all think we get on your nerves. Y'all get on our nerves. And we're just, we're pooped out. We try to please, we try to do all this kind of stuff and, and it's just not working. You know, we try to, we, we want y'all, we want to do good for you, but mm, y'all been to more women's conferences than all of womanhood. Are you, and you still ain't submitting like you ought to. <laughs> and it's pitiful, I'm telling you, it's pitiful. We, 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 y'all been to all these women's conferences and, and, and you come back and you just, you just not, you're bossy and y'all make us go to promise keepers, amen? <laughs> Men, you know what I'm talking about? They make us go to promise keepers. You know why we go to promise keepers? Because they make us go to promise keepers. They go, honey, I want you to go, okay? I want you to go. It will help you. I really believe it will help you. The pastor's taking a group and I want you to go. Do you hear me? And what do we do? We go. Amen? We go. Why do we go? Well, because they make us go. And then we go, good night. That'll take a Friday night and all day Saturday. Good night. I want you to go. Will you do it for me? Do it for me. So we go. And when we come back, what are we like, men, when we come back? It's pitiful. And we come back and we, we go, hey, honey, want to talk, want to share, want to open up? You want to communicate? That's nasty. That's, <laughs> I just don't like it. And then what do we do? We give you the channel changer. And we give you the channel changer and, 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 and we start watching their shows like we, we, remodeling a room that doesn't need remodeling. <laughs> honey, what color would you paint it? Oh, blue. Oh, honey, that's gross. <laughs> but it's happening to us. And, and, and I don't know what we're going to do about it. I, uh, we men, we try so hard, we, we die early. <laughs> Y'all know that? We die early. Y'all women outlive us. It's a statistic. It's a statistic. I ain't making it up. It's a statistic. <laughs> you outlive us. I mean, I do these, these, these trips to Branson, to Myrtle Beach, uh, Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg, and I watch these senior adult buses, 32 women and seven magnificent men on the bus. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? And every woman on that bus is one, I want to be with him. I want to, you know, I wish I could sit next to him. That one woman's been with him the whole time. <laughs> you know, you're supposed to share. I don't want to be serious with him, but I just, you know, I'd like to know him better. <laughs> it's a statistic. Y'all outlive us, I'm telling you now. Uh, it, it's just a matter of fact. And, uh, and I lo we laugh about it, nothing to get upset about it, but y'all do outlive us, you know, I'm telling you. And uh, I was in Mel Tillis' theater up there in Branson, Missouri. And I was talking about this with a group of senior adults. We laughed about it. And we were having a good time. And, and, uh, after, and when I finished speaking, you know, a man came up to me and said, Brother Dennis, I'll tell you why a man dies before a woman. I said, why is that? We want to. <laughs> I ain't going there. I ain't going there. But it's the truth. These women, I tell you what, we, but we love you through Jesus. Amen. It's a ministry. Uh, mm, mm, mm. And you know, if I die, you see, my wife is taken care of. I got insurance for that woman. Lord have mercy. I bunch of it. 
Oh, she'll cry for a couple of weeks. <laughs> then she'll decide to go on a cruise with Charles Stanley. <laughs> I'm serious. She'll bring her little girlfriend. She has these girlfriends. I call them the Steel Magnolias. There's about five of them. And she'll pay for their way. Oh, she's got plenty of money to pay for their way. And I can see them on that ship. I can see them up there and they will have done this and done that. And they've gone to a show. And then all of a sudden they'll pause there in one of the big lobbies. And her girlfriends will say, Laurie, I know you miss, I know you miss Dennis and everything. Yeah, he was funny. And <laughs> we did a lot of things together. <laughs> Let's go to the midnight buffet. <laughs> well, i tell you what, uh, yeah, my boys, now Chad and Dustin, they got a good mama. They got a good thing going with mama. Amen. Oh, my boys, they know how to work mama. And then mama takes care of the boys, everything they need. Amen. I mean, you know, I remember the days when I was growing up back home in Austin, Texas with Floyd Leon and Pauline Bernadine. And I remember those times when, when my older sister, Sherry Darlene, when she'd go sit on my daddy's lap and hug on him and run her fingers through his hair and everything. And then he'd just pull out his billfold and he'd say, well, how much you need, baby? Where y'all, y'all going to get some pizza or what now? Did, did, did her, did your girlfriend's daddy pay for it last time? He paid for it last time, Dad, he really did. Well, you pay for it this time. I'm going, liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> They're double dipping. They're double dipping. She's sitting on her daddy's lap. She's sitting on my daddy's lap getting cash. She gets up, she leaves. I go sit on my daddy's lap. I was about 16. He said, get off my lap. Good night, what are you doing? I said, I want some money. Get off off my lap. Don't ever sit on my lap like that again. Good night. I said, well, daddy, I'd like to have some money. I'd like to go get some pizza and everything. He said, you can go get a job, son. I'll tell you what I did, though. I went and found my mama, Pauline Bernadine, find my mama. And I went back there. She's back in the back bedroom. I said, Mama. She said, Why? Well, what's the matter? I said, Mama, I'd like to have some money to go get some pizza. I mean, I made my car payment. I made my insurance payment. You know what I'm saying? I said, I'd like to have some extra cash. Go get me some pizza. And she'd say, well, where's your daddy? Where's your daddy? So he's out in the garage. Okay, this is our little secret. <laughs> and she'd go back. She has money hid all over the house. I mean, if my mama, whenever my mama dies, I'm putting police tape around the house. There's money in there. Are you with me? Money you know not of. And then she'd give me some money, and I'd think, thank you, Mama. And I'd, she'd say, well, what do I get? And I'd give Mama a hug. I'd hug my Mama. I loved to hug my Mama. I'd hug my Mama. Sometimes I'd hug her too tight. Don't, don't squeeze so tight now. Sometimes I'd pick her up, and I'd squeeze her tight, kiss her on the neck and right on the mouth, like in the movies, plant one on the woman. Just. And she'd say, stop that. <laughs> Dennis. Oh, I'd have fun hugging my mom. My boys, they got a good deal. I mean, my boys, I mean, when they want something, they, they get it. My boys, both my boys, Mississippi College. My oldest son graduated from Mississippi College over there in Clinton, Mississippi. And, 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 and one night, I remember on a Thursday evening, about five in the evening, he calls home and says, uh, and I answer, hey, what's going on? Dad, let me talk to mama. Let me talk to mama. I said, you talking to your daddy. What you need, son? I need mama, dude. I need to talk to mama. I said, well, you ain't talking to mama. I said, you talking to your daddy. You don't talk to mama, mama, do you? You know, they mumble half of what, you know, they're always mumbling anyway. Mama, mama. Well, you know, I can barely understand them, but mama, I understand them, and I know where they're coming from. I know their heart. I know their heart. Oh, oh, there's a Hebrew word for that, bakar, bakar, whole bunch of bull. But anyhow, uh, they're working mama. They're working mama. And they called and said, Mom, I need some crawfish. I got a crawfish. I want some crawfish. I got a, I got a hanker for some crawfish. And, and she said, now, Chad, uh, Mom, I want to bring my buddies home and be with y'all and have some crawfish. It's two, it's two hour drive from Clinton, Mississippi to Monroe, Louisiana. But next thing I know, she goes, okay, well, y'all drive careful. Come on and I'll handle your daddy. 
I'm going, what does he want? He's coming up for crawfish. He's got a crawfish and urge. I went, he's coming home tomorrow night. Honey, you ought to be glad <laughs> that our kids want to come home. I said, I'm paying for gas, $100 for crawfish. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> I told her, I wish I was one of her boys. And she said, you're not. Again, she said that to me again and again and again. It hurts my heart when she says that to me. And then there's my little Dusty. Oh, Dusty, he's got it made. He's, he's still in college. Chad's graduated from college. And, oh, he's, you know, working. He's at a CPA firm and all this and that. But Dusty's still there. He may be there a while. Amen. <laughs> Dusty's ADD like his daddy. But whatever Dusty needs, and he just calls, and she'll drive over. I'm, I'm driving through there. I'll stop and feed you. She ain't driving through. She's just making up a reason to go over there to feed the boy and be with him and slip him some more money, slip him some more money. But I love my wife. I love my boys, and I love my mama. My mama's always been good to me. My mama, Pauline Bernadine, is full-figured, amen? Full-figured, mature. Mama says, I think I have a gland problem. I really do. I said, Mama, it's this gland right here. And she says, no, I'm serious. I really think I have. My mama's got hanging down part on her arms. I mean, I mean, when, when we go swimming in the lake, I, I, I put my foot in my mouth a while back. and said, Mama, those are the cutest little floaties I've ever seen on your arms right there. She said, those are mine. <laughs> My precious little old mama. I love her hair. Her hair is sort of wiry. The boys say it's poofy. It's sort of <laughs> poofed up and hairspray on it. And she says, it's got to last a week. <laughs> I mean, I remember when I baptized her years ago, put her underneath the water. When I came up, her hair didn't go down. It just, water went through like a sieve. I love my mama. You know, my boys, they got their mama, my little wife, Laura. They're they doing good, but I got my mama. My mama still takes care of me, Pauline Bernadine. And I have those precious memories when she took care of me. I was the middle child, older sister, Sherry Darlene, little sister, Terry Lynn. And I, I was blessed being that middle. I knew how to work both ends of the situation. You know, right there, that middle child, you're the compromiser. You know how to work it. And uh, my little mama, bless her heart, she loved me. But... I remember there were those times when I'd come home from school and she'd say, come here, hug your mother. I said, Mama, I ain't hugging you. I said, hug your mother. I said, Mama, I ain't hugging you. I said, hug your mother. And then my daddy would be in that recliner with a stick on the side, boom, break it down and say, boy, you better hug your mother right now. Because <laughs> daddy knew if Mama wasn't happy, he'd be unhappy a long time. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to deal with that now. That's another sermon. But... Uh, but I'd hug her. Now, a lot of times I'd come home and she'd have a sucrete box out with bobby pins in there and she would clean your ears. You, and, and back then you, you just stood there and, and you endured it for Jesus. I mean, she'd take a bobby pin and just dig in there, just dig. And I mean, she'd go so deep, tears coming out of your eyes. You could almost feel the bobby pin coming up there to your eyeball. She'd dig, and then she'd pull out a big wad of earwax and she'd say, look what I got out of your ear, look. Put it right in front of my face. Look, 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 look. I said, Mama, that's my brains. That's my brains. <laughs> and my grandma, she's sitting on the couch over there, my grandma Bell, she said, that goes good on favor blasters. <laughs> now that is nasty. <laughs> and grandma would go on, oh, it's good for chap lips. It's natural. It's a natural healer. Earwax on your lips? Oh yeah, and you don't lick them anymore either. <laughs> I hope not. Good night. But anyhow, my mom and my daddy, they, they, they in love. Floyd and Pauline, they in love. They hug all the time. I remember the times when they'd get in the recliner and they would be in the recliner and they'd just hugging and kissing and everything. And we'd go, gross, that is gross. That is gross. And my dad said, it ain't gross to me. I love your mama. And mama said, I love your daddy too. And they just, mm -hmm. and, and we would make fun of that. It was gross. And, and I remember one time I said something to my mama. I said, mama, I said, you and daddy French kiss? 
She said, what are you talking about? And my older sister, Darlene, told them about French kissing. About two days later, my mama comes up and said, we don't like it. <laughs> my little mama, she was a good cook, too. I love my mama. I hug her a bunch because she's a good cook. She'd, she'd always, when I'd be going off to school, I'd say, Mama, if you love me, when I get back, there'll be some chocolate icebox pies. She said, I don't have time, Dennis, to do that. I don't have time. Like I said, if you love me, there'll be some chocolate icebox pies when I get home. Don't do that to me, okay? Don't, I don't have time. Don't do that to your mother. I said, well, forget it. Just forget it. I'd come home after football practice and she'd say, well, you might want to look in the refrigerator. <laughs> I'd open up, be two chocolate ice box pies in there. I said, come on, mama. I'd give her a little hug, hug my mama. I love my mama. You know, I hug her. I hug her every chance now. And she is full figured and you know what I'm saying and everything. Sometimes I just reach around and just grab a little love roll right there and go, whoo. She goes, stop it. You know. <laughs> We made meatloaf. Hey, well, at least she cooked. Amen. <laughs> Some of you women, have y'all cooked lately? Well, it's so much easier just to go out to eat. <laughs> we cooked back then, and we had meatloaf. I love meatloaf. When I go to Cracker Barrel, sometime I go, could y'all take my meatloaf back and put more crackers in it? Because <laughs> I was raised with crackers in mine. We had a little bit of meat and a bunch of crackers <laughs> and a bunch of ketchup. Oh, she could cook, make bread. Mmm, and those were the days. I, I love my, my mama. I, I, she, was, she was my cook. She, she was my everything. She was my chaperone. I remember one time when I was about 15 or 16 years old, our church youth group, we were going down to Landa Park, New Bronzeville, Texas, Landa Park, and there's this big old pond, and you could get on a paddle boat, and me and my girlfriend, Norma, were on that paddle boat. And we went way out there, and I'd never kissed a girl, but I said, Lord, I'm doing this for Jesus today. <laughs> and I remember I finally reached over there, and I planted one on her. I mean, I laid one on her, and I just kept kissing. Like, because in the movies, they just pressed and kissed hard for a long time. Just... <laughs> and it started hurting. My lips started hurting because I was pressing so hard. And my mama was on the shore and saw me, and she was going, Break it up! Break it up! I didn't hear her. Oh, it was great. Break my little mama. Oh, gosh. But I tell you what, you know, she encouraged me. And I had girlfriends. I wasn't a very good-looking fella, but I was funny. And so girls would go out with me because I was funny. And, and I remember uh, one I was dating, and I, she broke up with me. Oh, it just tore my heart up. It just broke my heart. And uh, so I wrote her a poem. And I put it in the Reagan radar, our Reagan high school paper. And it goes like this. Are you ready? As tears dwell up and seem to hide the kind that hurt and stay inside, they never show, they never fall, but let me tell you something, they hurt most of all. Love is tender, true, and kind for someone special you have in mind, but then they hurt you, which they can't help, which leaves a scar that will always be felt. And yes, yes, time will pass, but you'll never forget your last. Life is full of turmoil and of grief, and sorrow sneaks up as if a thief. But we'll continue as best we can to live the battle which lives in man, a thing called love which carries tears and will continue through the years. I wrote that. Still remember it. Put that in the paper. When she saw it, oh, it made her mad. She went, oh, boy, she, she was mad, irritated, and, and would barely even talk to me. Started ignoring me. So I wrote another po poem. <laughs> Put it in the, our school newspaper again. It, said, it says this, you see her, she turns her head. You smile at her, she frowns instead. You walk close by her hoping to say hello, but as you go by, all you get is zero. But I'll continue to pass her away hoping that someday she'll smile and say hello in a nice, loving way. Oh, she was livid. She said, I don't ever want to see you again in all my life. You know, 
My buddies, I got my buddies, and my buddies got a hold of her girlfriends, and I got a hold of my buddies, and one last time, they got us together in our, we had like a mall, a commons area, and all, and she and her girlfriends met us, sort of like out at the 50-yard line. Me and my buddies, we come on out there, met them out there at the 50-yard line, like we were like captains of a football team coming to the center of a football field for the coin toss. I got there, and I thought, I need to touch your heart, and I knew, I knew the voice of Mr. Haney on Green Acres, and I thought, well, he's a movie star. Maybe, maybe his voice will touch her heart. <laughs> and one last try, I gave this poem. When angels fashioned you my love, they took the very fairest things to make you fair, took two perfect seashells for your ears and robbed morning sunbeams for your hair. From the sky came the stars, which are your eyes. The rose was robbed to paint your sweet mouth red. And then the angels smiled, and from a bird, they took the brain and placed it in your lovely head. (laughs) Oh, I saw her at my 30th high school reunion. I sort of looked at her and said, see, if you had married me, you could have had some videos. <laughs> you know, I love my mama because my mama believed in me. My mama always was there for me. I'd come home from school and have these report cards that on it said, talks too much, talks too much. My whole life was talks too much. Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Talk, brother, I know how you feel, son. Hang in there. It'll get better in about 40 years. <laughs> talks too much. Uh, I want to tell my teachers now, I've made a lot of money talking too much. <laughs> amen, 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 amen. <laughs> I remember in school, I remember I'd go to my teachers and my teachers would say, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna be my helper. You're going to be my helper. I, went, I did that last year. You know, every year I was my teacher's helper. Every year I had to sit next to my teacher's desk, grade school, junior high, high school, college. When I went to the seminary, I had to sit next to my professor's desk. (laughs) But my mom was always my encourager. She's always believed believed in me, and I thank my mama for that. I just love her to death. You know, I I have a little poem that I put together for my mom, and I want to read it. Uh, I want to read it to you. And I might, I might like Jimmy Stewart sort of help me do it. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to sit down to do it if you don't mind because I'm getting a little older in my older age. But it goes like this. Jimmy's going to help me. A, a tribute to Swan's mama. Yeah. My little mama, was it just yesterday that your children were out in the yard at play? And you stood at the door with your apron on, watching them tumble out on the lawn. I want to say thanks for the years now gone by, for I'm no longer a little child, just knee high. And I appreciate all that you have gone through in doing what seemed to me so easy for you. Thanks for cooking and for cleaning, for setting the tone where a boy could feel so secure in his own home. When I was a tyke, you calmed my fears, enjoyed my excitement, and yes, dried my tears. You you were my nurse when I lay sick in bed and, and my trainer when I needed correcting instead. You put up with me and my buddies when I was in my teens, watched my ball games, encouraged my dreams. Now that I'm older, I recall your sweet face across the dinner table as dad would say, Grace. The smile you smiled then, today's just the same. Crinkling your eyes when you call my name. I know much more than I knew as a child and thank the Lord for my little mama's sweet smile, for her tender heart, for her godly walk that more than words have so wisely taught. My little mama, Though now I'm a man grown with a wonderful wife and two boys of my own, only you, Pauline Bernadine, and not another can ever be 
to me what you are, my mother. I love you, Mom. How about that? <laughs> Thank you. Well, my mom's quite a lady. I love her so much, and we've had so much fun over the years. I, I look back on all those times, and we laugh about it. We get tickled about all the funny things that we would take place in our home. I, I remember how she would fix us little popsicles. Amen. The popsicle truck would come by, but we never got to buy one from the popsicle truck. We had Tupperware. We had Tupperware popsicles. And you'd have popsicles of whatever you had left over from the night before, like iced tea popsicles. <laughs> Red Kool-Aid popsicles. Are you with me? And, and, and that's just the way they are, just the way that my family would. And my, my people, we were, we were just common people, just regular folks. When mama went to the grocery store, we never bought the, the real thing, the real Coca-Cola. We always got Cragmont and Shasta. <laughs> we always got the off brand. And for a long time, we didn't even get that because mama said, we're not, you had, remember you had to use a church key to pop the top. We're not doing that and acting like we're drinking. We're not doing that. <laughs> acting like we're opening up a beer. We're not doing that. <laughs> I said, mama, it's a, it's a cola. Well, we're not acting like it, you know. You know, to this day, when I go down home to see my mom and my dad, when I'm on my way down there, I said, now, mom and daddy, y'all got my diet Dr. Pepper? I got to have my diet Dr. Pepper now. And my dad said, you come on down here. We got you covered now. You come on down here. We got you covered. I said, daddy, you got my diet Dr. Pepper? We got you covered. Come on down here. Your mama's looking forward to seeing you. I always want to say, daddy, are you looking forward to seeing me? But see, he's not into that. He, he, you know, your mother really is excited about it. Well, Dad, are you, you looking forward to seeing me too? Your mother really, really has been looking forward to it. Well, you got my diet, Dr. Pepper. I told you we got you covered. Come on. I get down there and we visit a while. And then after we visit a while, then I say, I need my diet, Dr. Pepper. I'm going to the refrigerator. I said, y'all got my diet, Dr. Pepper now, don't you? We got you covered. You're not going to believe it, Dan. You're not going to believe it. I open up the refrigerator door, and what's in there? Dr. Thunder. <laughs> Dr. Thunder. We, we get it from Sam's. It tastes exactly the same. You cannot tell the difference. I'm wanting to go, did you save a nickel, Daddy? Did you save a nickel? <laughs> oh. I just get sort of flustered about those kind of things, but, but those are precious memories, amen? I, you know, listen, I remember watching television with my mama. When I was growing up, we'd watch As the World Turns. Somebody, is there a remnant out there? There's, always, there's one there, God bless you. There's one, someone else. As the World Turns. Choir, is there anybody in the choir? Raise your hand, God bless you. There's two, <laughs> three. As Billy Graham would say, I see that hand, I see that hand. God bless you, God bless you. We don't have any literature for you, but we love you. <laughs> We'd watch as the world turns. And back then my dad would come home for lunch. Those were the days when man would, a man would come home for lunch. And he would come home and it'd be on, it'd just be starting. And my dad would go, oh good night, is that stuff on? That's pitiful. That is pitiful, pitiful, pitiful. And then he'd say, well, turn it up if we're going to watch it. <laughs> and we'd turn it up, and we'd watch the whole show. And then right at the end, when it's over, he'd get up, I've had enough of it. I've had enough of it. I, I've, I've had enough of it. But if he missed a day or two when he'd come home for lunch, he'd go, is Grandpa okay? <laughs> My mama to this day. As the world turns, she said, I think Lisa, deep down, is good. She really, I said, Mama, please don't ever mention that at a Wednesday night prayer meeting. You know, I love my mama, but sometimes I'm afraid she's going to say, we need to pray for Ellen, you know. Or, or, let me, I, I go all the way back, as I said, to Penny on that show. Remember Ellen was on there? Remember Ellen married Dr. Stewart? Remember? 
Remember she had had a little boy younger, later, earlier? <laughs> and then she and Dr. Stewart got married and he had adopted the, uh, Dan, remember Dan? And I remember all that. And then three years later, he got married. And uh, I thought, how do you do that? How do you go from birth to 21 in three years? But it happens in television. But I'd watch all that with my mama. And those were precious times. I love that. We'd watch Queen for a day. Queen for a day. And I, when I think about it right now, I get choked up about it. You know, whichever woman had the, the worst, saddest story got a refrigerator or something. And my mama used to say, who are you? Who do you pick, Dennis? Who do you pick? I went, number three. She said, me too. <laughs> oh, I love my mama. You know, all these years, all these years, I, I've, I've, I've missed my mama's birthday. And you know, when I was in the pastorate for 23 years, you know, getting off on the weekends or Sunday, I mean, if you take off a weekend, it counts as a day of vacation. Amen. You know how you have those church members? Well, we drove by the church three times and uh, I didn't see his car there. <laughs> he must be on vacation. And they, they're people that keep track of that kind of stuff. So it's sometimes hard to get away. And then I'm busy the last, la, since 1995 speaking and entertaining and doing this as a ministry of encouragement. And, 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 and a while back, I got to thinking, I haven't been with my mother on her birthday in probably over 20 years. Well, this last August 23rd, I was in Houston, Texas. I was going to speak that night. And, uh, and I got up early that morning because when I travel so much, I get up, I wake up early. And uh, all of a sudden I realize it's my mama's birthday. So I get on the phone and I call my mama. And she answers, hello, hello, mama. Hi, what are you doing? I said, mama, happy birthday. Oh, well, thank you. Happy birthday, mama. How old are you? 76. I said, Mama, good night getting older. Well, you are too. <laughs> and I said, well, what are you going to do today? What's your plans for today? She says, well, I'm going to go to Foley's and I'm going to get me a gift for Daddy to give to me for my birthday. <laughs> so you young couples, that's what happens later on. They just... Matter of fact, even in midlife, they'll go buy stuff and just inform you of what they've done. <laughs> and then they'll say things like, this is my birthday and my Christmas. <laughs> I remember my wife did that one time. I looked at her new rock she had on her finger. I went, good night. I could build two churches on that rock right there. <laughs> She'd say, do you have to be spiritual about everything? <laughs> I said, well, excuse me. But my little mama... I said, well, Mama, so you going to get your, I'm going to go get something for Daddy to give to me. And then I, I, I said, you don't wrap it up. Oh, yeah, I wrap it up and everything. And we enjoy opening it and everything. I like doing that. I went, well, isn't that precious? <laughs> so you're going to Foley's. Yeah. I said, when does Foley's open? She said, 10 o'clock in the morning. I said, really? I said, and all of a sudden I got an idea. I said, well, Mama, I'll tell you what, have your cell phone on. Now, she has a cell phone. When she started out, she had 30 minutes for the month. <laughs> My dad said, she don't need more than that. That's just for emergencies only. <laughs> well, now she's up to about three or 400. We're so proud of her. <laughs> My dad always gets nervous about those cell phones. He said, I think it gives you cancer. <laughs> Be ca them cell phones, everything gives you cancer. I said, Mama, have your cell phone on. I said, because I'm, I'm going to have FedEx drop you off my gift, and they won't leave it at the house unless you give them permission. They're going to call you and for permission. I just made all that up because I said, that's what I want you to do, Mama. And I decided I'm going to drive from Houston and my rent car to Austin, and I'm going to see if I can find her at Foley's. And so... We're going, I'm driving to Houston. I said, Lord, don't let her go to Walmart. <laughs> Lord, don't let her change your mind and go to Penny's. Don't let her go to Sears. Don't let her go to Dollar General. I'm trying to be in, as inclusive as I can here. I said, let her go to Foley's. And I'm driving along and I get to Foley's. I ride at 10 o'clock. Look in there and I don't know where to even look in that big old place where she's going to shop. So I called my older sister, Sherry Darlene. I said, Darlene, 
what kind of outfits does mama wear? She said, well, she wears Alfred Dunbar or Dunner, Dunner? Okay, little Alfred Dunner, whoever he is. So I went over to the lady and I said, do you have any Alfred Dunner stuff here? She said, I'm right over there. And I went over there and there's a little section, Alfred Dunner. And so then I backed off and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm, I'm worried and wondering if she's going to come or not. So I called Darlene back again. I said, see where she is. Call her on the cell phone. Just act like and see what she, so she did. And then she come back. She's coming over. She's coming into the foley. She's coming. Be ready. So I was waiting. And all of a sudden, way over yonder, she comes walking in to Foley's. Here's this precious little senior adult lady, five foot tall, healthy. <laughs> and she's walking in there, and I was watching my mama. I guess the first time I've just watched my mama from a distance without her knowing that I was watching. And she just coming in there, and she got these rack of clothes, and she'd look and look. And, and her little hair is still poofy and wiry. Has it sort of blocked in the back now. New little touch. <laughs> and she'd pick up an outfit and she'd put it to her little chest. And put, what can you tell by putting it up against you? It's sort of like a man with a short tie. He's going, looks good from here. <laughs> and she kept looking. And I kept watching my little mama. And I said, Lord, my mama is a senior adult. My mama's getting older. I just watched her. And I thought about all those years growing up and when I'd hug my mama and stuff like that. And when she used to pinch me on the hangy down part of my arm when I acted up in church and left a hickey on my arm right there. <laughs> I'd go to high school, and my buddies would say, hey, Swan, you got a hickey. Who gave you the hickey on the back of your arm? I went, my mother. <laughs> I can tell there's a lady over here going, I don't think I'd have told Diane. <laughs> Just pray for me, honey. Just pray for me. Finally, that's what my mama does. She just loves me unconditionally. <laughs> Finally, I made my way, and I got right behind her. And all of a sudden, she turns around to look at another rack of clothes and goes, Dennis, oh, Dennis, oh, Dennis, Dennis, what are you doing here? I said, well, it's your birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, oh. <laughs> I said, well, what are you doing? I'm trying to find something for Daddy to give me for my birthday but I can't, I don't like anything I've seen. I said, well, come over here to Alfred Dunner over here. Oh, that's not on sale right now. That's not on sale. I said, mama, we ain't worried about what's on sale. I'm gonna get you some Alfred Dunner. Oh, Dennis. That's why we have something and y'all don't. <laughs> I mean, at that moment, you know, it's sort of a precious moment. I almost wanted to break into Barney Five and say, you're the cat's meow. <laughs> you're, the, you're the sweetest little thing I've ever known. <laughs> you know, it was just a precious time. And I said, Mama, you pick out what you want. Let's look at it. And I remember we looked at that rack. And I remember, I think she's like an 18. It was a little number 18 on her little outfit. And, and, and she said, I can fit in an 18. I don't button anything anymore. <laughs> and I told her, I said, I don't either. <laughs> and she looked at me and said, see, we're so much alike. <laughs> I said, well, my reason I don't button it because it won't reach. And she said, you didn't need to say that. <laughs> and then I bought her a little outfit, a little blouse. And then I got her them britches of Alfred Dunner britches. And I'm going to tell you, those are awesome. That elastic, yeah. I mean, it just, and then I took her over and said, let's get a purse. Now, that's enough. That, that is too much. That's too much. I said, Mama, I'm getting you a purse. And I took her to this place where the purses are behind the glass, locked. And she said, no, we're not. No, Dennis, no. If Daddy found out, he would die. 
and my dad's memory is not the best as it used to be. And I said, well, he won't remember, you know. <laughs> he won't know. Well, we're not spending that much. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so she ended up buying a little $29 red purse. I said, now, now we're going to go to the food court. And we're just going to have some coffee together. I, okay, I know where to go. Daddy and I, we go to Annie's. The little cinnamon twist for our coffee because it's the best buy for coffee. <laughs> I went, oh, we want to save a nickel. Let's... <laughs> and so as we're walking over there to get our coffee, I, there was this guy that had a booth like a little booth wagon kind of thing and had t-shirts on there and coffee cups with pictures on there, people's pictures on the coffee cup and the t-shirt. And I said, listen, buddy, could you take my mom and, and, and picture, my picture, us together, and put it on a coffee cup? He said, I can put it on a coffee cup. I'm just giving my testimony, all right? <laughs> I'm trying to be as accurate as I can be. I said, well, I want two of them. He said, $21.95, $21.95. And my mama said, Danny, is that too much for a coffee cup? I said, we're gonna have our picture on He said, you get one line on it, one line, one line per cup. I said, well, I want mine to say, Mama, I love you, Dennis. Mama, what do you want in yours? I want Dennis. I love you, Mama. And he's going, I think I can handle that. I said, well, you fix it while we drink our coffee. So he went to work on it. We get our cup of coffee, and we sit down, and we talk. And we talk a long time, and we talk about a lot of things. Talk about life, talk about daddy, talk about us kids, talk about the days to come. And when it was all said and done, we'd finished, and well, it's time to go, because the man came over and said, I got your coffee cups in the box, right here in the box. The machine washable. Thank you. <laughs> I paid him. Then it's just me and mama. Me and my little mama. And she didn't have to tell me this time. God told me. He said, Swanee, hug your mama. And I hugged my mama. And I hugged her a long time. It was one of those hugs where I ain't, I ain't going to let go. I'm a, she'll have to let go first. And then after a while, okay, there's people here. <laughs> I gave her a full frontal. <laughs> when I was a pastor, I gave you side body hugs. Amen. Side body only. But if you're 65 and older, I'll give you a frontal. Do you understand? <laughs> I shared that down at Pigeon Forge at a senior adult conference the other day, and I had a lady come running to me, I want a frontal! I want a frontal! I mean, when she, I got, when she grabbed me, I was engulfed. The lights went out. I, didn't, I, was, I couldn't breathe. I didn't know if I was centering or what, but I just, <laughs> finally she let go, and I came up and went, I'm alive! I'm here to tell you, folks, if your mama's alive, hug your mama. If your mama's not alive, hug some mama that needs a hug. Hug some saint that needs a hug. People need hugs. You see, I believe that on the cross, when Jesus looked at John and said, John, behold your mama. And he looked at his mama and said, mama, behold your son. And I believe that there was a time, and it was an appropriate time, where old John hugged his new mama and held her. And I'll tell you what else I believe. I believe that when the Lord Jesus returned, and I know he told Thomas to touch me, told someone else, don't touch me, then said Thomas, behold, go ahead and touch my side. I have a feeling within those 40 days when he saw his mama, I bet you he hugged his mama. I bet you he hugged his mama. I bet you he hugged his mama. And I know this in heaven, in heaven, when I see my mama, I will give my mama a hug. I want to encourage you folks 
to give folks that need that hug that hug. Give them that holy hug. And may you be blessed for a long, long time in giving those hugs. I've enjoyed being with you. God bless you. Go hug your mama when you can. Amen. Go hug your mama. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Woo. Thank you very much. Give me a hug. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, choir. Appreciate you. Woo. Thank you very much. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.